Hey guys, this is Dragon Ball for Life here. Today I want to talk about the Dragon Ball character speed, especially pertaining to light speed and dispo in general. Now, when I say all these stuff is because Dragon Ball characters, when we talk about their speed, can be very I guess you can say inconsistent and very controversial and especially with dispo in the mix and you know what happened in the tournament of power a lot of people's uh, perception on the dragon ball character speed had been i guess changed or just uh, as a whole thrown away now there's always been discussion and argument argument about the dragon ball characters uh, speed how fast they are a lot of dragon ball fans say that these characters were faster than the speed of light like you know in dragon ball or uh, i mean dragon ball z or early dragon ball z some even say dragon ball and then there's uh now people who say that no these characters weren't faster than light they only started becoming faster than light uh up till you know the tournament of power in dragon ball super saying that dispo was the first person to show light speed levels of uh, to be shown to have uh faster than light speed and whoever like scales to him or above him in terms of speed would be at light speed or faster than light because the statement made by topo about him surpassing sound and uh light now people say that and they state that well he's the only one stated but personally i think just because somebody's been stated to do something and like you know in comparison to something else like saying light speed doesn't mean that the other characters have never done it just because dispo has been specifically stated to move faster than light doesn't mean that just because goku and the rest of the characters have never been stated that doesn't mean that they can't i mean goku at this point when he fought him goku speed in his uh goku speed in his super saiyan god form was actually matching up to dispo and he would have used super saiyan blue but they were talking about it consuming too much energy and hit yes he was getting speed blitz but he was like learning and he was getting faster and faster so these characters were obviously you know you could argue that too but here's the thing the speed feat and you know whole dispo stuff and everything else it's a lot more complex than people think it is so i want to get through this as uh thorough as po possible so let's talk about some of the instances people state that the characters in drag were faster than the speed of light all the way back in dragon ball personally i don't agree with that a lot of people say that because of two reasons uh or actually i should say two instances one was when goku was fighting his general black in his mech suit and the second time when goku was fighting uh tn now when goku's fighting general black in his mech suit general black fires this uh he has like this uh, cannon on his uh, arm and it basically fires like a gamma laser and it fired it at uh, Goku. Goku, he tries to hit him twice with it. Goku dodges it twice. One time he does it in close range. Goku jumps up in the air. He catches him. Then the second time when he throws him against a building and he fires the laser and is about to hit him, but Goku is able to dodge it and get on top of a roof. Then the uh, Tien one is Tien uses a solar flare and Goku basically, you know, runs over to mass roshi grabs his uh sunglasses put them on and then counter attacks uh tn who tries to use the soul flare a lot of people try to discredit this by saying that uh th this was him aim dodging he was seeing that in the light of sight and he saw that it was going to happen and he moved uh you know before they were able to get the actions but if you actually look at the scenes it's not true if you look in the uh, manga panels of uh goku dodging it especially the second one general black is firing the blast at him and it's only a couple of feet away and goku still has moved and then the next panel it shows a hit and we're assumed that he gets hit but we see later on that he dodges it but goku only moves after it's already been fired and it's coming at him and it's at least a decent uh amount of distance only away from him so that disproves the whole aim dodging thing because he dodges only after it got fired you can't do aim dodging of the uh, thing is already fired you have to dodge before the thing like you know they pull the trigger so he did dodge it before that and then uh tian's one once again people try to make it sound like he did it before T, uh, Tien activated Soul Flare. He did activate a Soul Flare, and in the middle of it, you see the light going on, uh, flashing, and Goku's there, and then uh, Goku disappears and then comes back, and then he uh, you know, tries to stop him. So Goku, once again, didn't aim dodge. He did it after it was already done. Now, does that mean I think that Goku is faster than speed of light? No. I do think that this is inconsistency and it just doesn't make any sense. A lot of the Dragon Ball fans try to argue this saying, yeah, that this proves that these characters are, you know, these characters were faster than the speed of light in Dragon Ball, but I don't think so. Let's be honest. These guys were shown to dodge bullets and, and like rockets and stuff. So they would be uh, hypersonic or even massively hypersonic, but to put them at 
light speed or even close to light speed is just ridiculous let's be honest and i do think once again i don't think this is uh i don't think this is something to take literally i think this is a high-end uh inconsistency and this is toriyama not understanding how you know lasers would work or how light works and he wasn't trying to be literal because sometimes the writers they, they can be absent-minded they don't think about this stuff whereas us as fans we can overlook at things so i think this was the fans overlooking at it goku i don't see goku being fast in the speed light at that point especially a kid goku and like it's weird because people later on later on state that he was faster than uh lightning you know like he trained to get faster than lightning but it's like lightning is slower than light and i already made a video about how fast lightning is is one one ten one thousandth the speed of light so it's it's not that close to the speed of light so for goku to get stronger and dodge it later on means that he wasn't fast in speed light there so that'll contradict it so i don't think he was then if you want to argue throughout dragon ball z yes but i think saying through super especially to that point where it's just dispo i think it's too ridiculous and i also want to talk about the fact that super is shown to have bad writing i've already talked about it with you know their durability with them getting hurt by bullets and stuff or lasers i've also talked about how you know in countless videos i made countless videos about how modern day dragon ball's power scaling is kind of awful like it's inconsistent stuff that you know the stuff that is supposed to be impressive now or they're struggling against now is not something that they would have struggled with or you know been impressive back then because they've done and uh, gone through more so the power scaling is not correct but does that mean that the power scaling is wrong when it comes to dispo well i'll get into that but like i said i don't think dragon ball he was that fast dragon ball z you can argue because there are some points and i'll bring out the my evidence and arguments for why i think uh goku was faster than speed light at dragon ball z because i do think at least even free around frieza saga to android saga these characters proved that they were faster than light in my opinion i think around that time is where i would uh clock them off as uh light speed or faster than light speed whereas i think later than that would be too you know way too far and especially this point so let's get into the whole dispo stuff now i think that people are taking this out of uh context and also taking it too far they're not i don't think they understand what they're saying because the, the problem is they hear the name of his uh you know his mode which is called li maximum light speed mode so when people hear light speed that means that he's faster than light that means that these characters are not uh moving at light speed because they because uh, you know he's beating them up and stuff and a lot of people talk about how dispo mentioned that he went he moved faster than speed of light but let's talk about that what is why would that mean that why would that prove that you know that only dispo is able to move at the speed light or speed light is impressive because if you look at what the words that uh you know topo says all he says is uh he was able throughout constant battle battle to move faster than the speed of sound and light he puts sound and light in the same category basically meaning showing his progression and comparing two high speeds obviously to a far different degree but it's showing that the level of like how much faster he was he was able to improve he was able to go from just surpassing the speed of sound to surpass the speed of light so i feel like when people hear that they just think about the light part and they're like yep he's bragging about the fact that he's fast to speed light that must mean that it's an impressive feat there no it's not what he's trying to convey is the fact that dispo it gets faster and faster throughout his fights and he's shown to progress and also if you're going to argue that him moving faster than light would be impressive then wouldn't you uh, state that him moving faster than the speed of sound would be impressive too because he mentioned that too he was just using these as comparisons because when we ever use speed we're always using speed of sound and light we always use those two things even if characters are far faster we always go back to they're this many times faster than speed of sound or this many times faster than speed of light we're not saying that that's just their max or they just newly got faster than the speed of sound or light that just means that you know in general that they can move faster than that i feel like the way the fans saw this is just both trying to uh hype up the fact that he moved fast to speed light and that he newly obtained it first of all he never gave us a time frame of when he observed fast speed light because from that from that statement you can argue that 
that means that he surpassed speed of light, uh, speed of sound, and speed of light at, uh, 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 closely at the same time, which wouldn't make sense. Speed of sound and light are far different, so there's no way he can just newly surpass speed of sound and easily surpass speed of light in that close time frame. So we're not given a time frame. He could have surpassed speed of light a long, long time ago, and he could be way faster than the speed of light. It's just that that's the highest cap. Because let's be honest. Oh, what other speed will we say he's when people calculate speed especially in fiction the most we use is a light and then we say maybe like multiple times the speed of light but we don't really say this character moves faster than time or this character moves faster than uh you know transcendence or some crap like that we all say uh light because that's the fastest speed we can you know compare anything or calculate it off of so him saying that once again like i said he wasn't trying to say that that was like you know Impressive. He wasn't like, and he can even move faster than the speed of light. He said in the same sentence, like, like it was just common. Like it was like, oh, he naturally progressed through both of those speeds, and he showed his uh, incredible speed. He was more just impressed about how fast he was able to, you know, surpass these uh, speed barriers than the speed barriers himself. So I do feel like the Dragon Ball fans over exaggerating. They hear the moment they heard light speed, they're like, yep, this means that they're just they're just barely light speed or newly light speed. Once again, he didn't give us a time frame. He didn't try to make it sound like it was impressive. And third, he put light speed and speed of sound in the same uh, sentence, showing that you know he his, the whole point of him saying that was just trying to show that. Dispo uh, gets faster as he, uh, the more times he fights, the more faster he gets every time. So that's what he was trying to say. And also Dispo would be thousands of times faster even if we were going based off that argument because he says when he moves, he moves regularly and then he goes into his light speed mode which makes him move thousands of times faster. So he would move at least thousands of times speed light. But once again, I don't think he was saying that he was only fast and light speed. I think he's way fast and light speed way before that. The Dragon Ball characters are way fast and light speed. And some people might say, then why will you mention it? Well, let's look at Flash. The Flash, Barry Allen and Wally West and all these other uh, speedsters, they've shown to move faster than the speed light countless times, way faster than the speed light to extreme amounts. But guess what? Throughout every comic book you see, they constantly say they're moving faster than the speed of light. They're going to the, at the speed of light. They reach the speed of light. They keep on mentioning the speed of light. Even though these guys are countless times faster than the speed of light, they keep on reiterating it and mentioning it. Why? Because even though they're faster than the speed of light, and at this point it shouldn't be impressive, that's the, the, that's the highest benchmark of speed you can calculate. So there's no real comparison you can make uh, besides light speed. So even though the flash is far faster than the light and shown to be far faster than light, they still mention the light speed multiple times. So I think it's fair to use that argument for Dispo 2 and the Dragon Ball characters. Just because they stated that he's moving faster than light doesn't mean that that's his max or that's all he can do or it's just impressive. Because they stated for Flash, if we were going based off that logic, then that means that the Flash and, you know, Barry Allen and Wally West aren't faster than the speed light or just newly got faster than the speed light or barely because they mention all the time. That just uh, that's just a benchmark, and we did see this in the Tournament of Power. They did have some stupid writing, like Frieza is telling Dis uh, Topo that he can destroy uh, a planet and stuff. Is like we know that we've seen you destroy planets, we've seen your power. So once again, it doesn't really matter because oh, we're going based on that, that logic saying he just newly stated that. Well, Frieza stated that he can destroy a planet, and we already know that too. So these guys are not, these guys are stating stuff that we already know. Oh, we're going based off that logic saying, because my argument here is they were able to go fast speed light way back, further back. And some people might say, well, if they can move fast speed light way further back, then why would they mention it now if they're way faster? Well, they could destroy planets way further back too. Why are they still mentioning it now? It's just, it's just an impressive feat, and it's a great uh, comparison to make. It's hard to make uh, other comparisons, especially with speed of light. What? Tell me what other thing they can compare their speed to uh, uh, after the speed of light. What is faster than the speed of light that they can compa compare their own speed to? That would make sense. That's the only thing. Now, I do think that the power scaling was ridiculous when the two um, Omni Kings couldn't see. Like, I can't see this. I need this this iPad thingy with these uh, high spec gadgets so I can see. And it's like, I get it. You, I mean, it doesn't make sense to me. These. They're the rulers of the universe. They they watch over everything over over all these gods, but they can't see these guys that move uh, at dispo speed. That's that's just stupid to me. I mean, Beerus and Champa they can move way faster. By that logic, that means that Beerus could easily kill. Uh, you know, he could easily kill. Uh, what's the thing called? Uh, the Omni King, because by that logic, the Omni King, if he couldn't see uh, uh, Beerus, and Beerus is way faster than that. 
Bruce could have easily spe speed blitzed him and obliterated him. So I don't like the argument that people make where he's like, he's not that powerful, he's this and that. They try to go with the whole, he's not a martial artist. Yeah, that means he doesn't need to fight because he's so overly powerful. But I will say that the writing of um, the Omni Kings is very terrible, and especially in this regard. They showed Omni King not being able to see. Omni King should be able to see that. that it, it doesn't matter how fast Dispo is, he shouldn't be that fast that the ruler of the entire, you know, all the universes and all of existence couldn't see this guy moving. That just doesn't make any sense. So people don't use this because people use this to argue that this and that, but this is just bad writing. For me, this proves the point that this is bad writing because even if the, you know, the Omni Kings can't see it, that means that the writing is so bad that they don't even know what the hell they're talking about. So that, the whole Dispo thing doesn't disprove that these guys are, you know, not light speed or just newly acquired light speed. Now let's talk about some instances throughout Z where I believe made me believe that they're fast and light. First was when Goku arrived to the battlefield against Frieza and you know Cell, uh, no against against uh, Vegeta, Piccolo, and Gohan and Krillin. When Goku arrived there, it, he you know when he uh, zoned out and sensed. He found out that, you know, they were halfway across the planet. It's even stated on the back issue of the book that they were halfway across the planet. And he gets there like within a second or less. Now, a lot of people try to discredit this uh, uh, feat by stating, oh, that half uh, distance, uh, you know, it wasn't the case because that back, the, the back issue that stated that was only in English uh, stuff and it wasn't real. No, it is actually true. It's in the Japanese one has it. It's just that it's translated in subtitles in uh, English for the English readers. So yes, it's stated that it was halfway across the planet. Another thing people try to use is when Goku came out of it, he stated that it's not that far away, which is a dumb argument to make because it's like, yeah, it's not that far away for Goku, not for us. Just because Goku doesn't think halfway across the planet as far doesn't mean it's not halfway across the planet. Like they're going based off of Goku's uh, a judge of distance. Goku Goku can move way faster than us, so moving at you know extreme uh, distances means nothing to him. To us, it's still insane. For example, running a mile to a regular person is a lot, but to a track star, it's nothing. Running a mile is nothing, and you know if you see a, a, a track star doing it, they're gonna be like, "That's nothing." Now that doesn't mean that the that it's not a mile; it's still a mile. It's just that comparing us to somebody who does this all the time and this is a high level competition, that is nothing to them. That's just, you know, mundane. You can also look at this as like uh, weightlifters. Of let's say you can bench, bench press like 150 and this guy can bench press 300 and he's he, he's like bench pressing 300 like, oh man, that's a lot of weight. He's like, nah, that's nothing. That doesn't mean that it's not 300 pounds. It's still 300 pounds. It's just nothing to him. So for Goku to say halfway across the planet was nothing to him, doesn't mean it's not halfway across the planet. It just means that that distance is not that far for him uh, in general. So yeah, I think people try to misconstrue that. Uh, also, you do see in the anime when he zooms out, he zooms out to focus on the planet and he goes to the other side and you see directly it's halfway across the planet. Another argument people made, one guy made, and it did get me for a moment, but then I thought about it, I was like, wait, that doesn't make any sense. They stated, well, uh, uh, the reason uh, it's not halfway across the planet because you know where they were fighting is where the dragon balls were and the dragon balls were like you know just an island over uh you know um i think they said the spaceship is when you see the dragon you can see the spaceship in the background but they failed to mention the fact that as the fight progressed they started to move away and way further away in the battle what happened was when when frieza went first to his second form he destroyed that island that they were standing on so obviously they weren't where you know where the ship was where they you know some of the dragons as the fight progressed and he went in his second form and fought against Piccolo. They were moving back and forth. His third form, they were moving even further. And then his final form, they were literally islands across. You see a great distance in an island across. Frieza transforming and these guys trying to formulate a plot. And then once when he gets ready, he speed blitz right to there. So you see them moving further and further away. So yes, at first, um, the distance from Goku and them was only like an island away, but that island got destroyed and they started moving further and further away until they got halfway. Now, some people also say it took Goku a second. To be honest, I think it took him less than a second. It looked like a second to us because we were looking through uh, cinematic timing. And if you look at the manga panel, it's literally the next, like, uh, the next panel, you see him literally on, uh, right there. So I think that he was moving faster. It took, it took him less than a second. And you can also tell because Frieza had uh, Vegeta right there and he was about to kill him right there. 
and Goku started moving while he was moving his hand. And by the time Goku arrived, Frieza barely moved his hand even a centimeter. And, you know, he was right there. He could have easily killed him. And with his speed especially, he could have easily penetrated his chest in an instant. So for Goku to get there, that would mean he moved in less than a second. And this is important because light goes around the earth seven and a half times in a second. So let's say if Goku, for argument's sake, went halfway across the planet in a second, that would mean that he would be 14, uh, 1 14th the, the speed of light. Because light can go seven and a half times faster than, uh, actually one fifteenth the speed of light. Because light can go um, seven and a half times across uh, the planet uh, in a second. So if Goku was going half that, that means that you double up. Uh, it would be basically half in that. So you would double up the the amount of times uh, light can go around it. So it'd be seven and a half times uh, two, which would be fifteen, and that means that Goku's speed it took him uh, one fifteenth the speed of light, which is a big number. I don't have the calculation here. I'll probably um, put it up a little later. But yeah. Uh, Goku would be moving one uh, fifteenth the speed of light there. Now, some people might say, "Well, that proves that he's not light speed." But remember, the, the Dragon Ball characters get stronger and faster as time progresses. So this is early on. So if Goku at this point was one fifteenth the speed of light, definitely later on in the series he would be faster than, than the speed of light. Especially when you consider Super Saiyan, because when he went Super Saiyan. He had 15 times, he, Super Saiyan is a 50 times multiplier. So he would be at least a couple of times faster than the speed of light. Also another good feat I saw was, uh, you know, when Frieza captured Goku in the energy blast, he threw it down in the uh, ground and Goku escaped and like, what happened? He uh, Piccolo basically explained to Gohan that, you know, the moment it touched down the ground, it exploded. And once when the impact, you know, like once we made contact with the ground, not only did it explode, but it released Goku from the psychic uh, trap and it allowed him to move. So instantly when the explosion went off, Goku was able to fly while in the center of the explosion, fly right through it without it uh, harming him and outpaced the blast radius so far that he was right behind them. And this was also considered just a warm up. So Goku was heavily holding back. So he was far faster than this. And this wasn't even him using Kaioken. He was able to get out of the blast radius instantly when the explosion went off because that was the only time he was able to move. And then another and a really good argument I have for his uh, light speed feat is, um, you know, Goku when he was, uh, what's the thing called? When, uh, this is the perfect time, them against the androids. Why do I say this? Against specifically Android 19 and 20. Now, if you know how the androids work, a lot of people get misinformation and say they use key. They do not use key. They use a regular natural energy source because if they did use key, they would have been able to be sensed. Key is life energy, so non-living organisms or mostly non-living organisms can't have key. So Android 18 and 17, even though they're cyborgs, technically don't have key because most of them are robotic, especially where they get their power from. And 19 and 20, fully robotic, I know Dr. Jiro is a cyborg, but that's the only part of him that's left is his brain. So the rest of his body is mechanical. And the reason why I say this is that means that all their energy attacks that they use, use natural energy sources like electricity, photons, you know, these other stuff. And that matters. And it is also stated in the Dragon Ball games when, you know, they use their attacks is called photon cannon, photon laser, stuff like that. That means that their energy attacks are using photons, which is light particles. Basically mean they're using actual light as an attack. The problem with using the Dragon Ball character's energy attacks is it can be very, uh, it can change because it's not like, it's not like a natural source. So uh, their energy attacks, even though they form light out, they can be, move either at the speed of light, faster than the speed of light or less than the speed of light. They don't need to apply to the actual science of how light works. But when it comes to the androids, since they are using real science, they would be using, you know, photons, which is light. It's not like, you know, this spiritual aspect like key is, it is scientific. So whenever, you know, you see these characters fire these energy attacks, they're fighting a firing light. And when you see these characters being able to react or dodge it, that basically means they're able to react to and dodge light attacks, meaning that they're faster than light. And we've seen these guys react to it when, um, Dr. Jiro and 19 came down, they started, he started firing off lasers and they were able to like, you know, see it and realize what was happening. Also, Goku was able to dodge it by ducking. 
uh, I mean, the other guy was able to dodge by ducking, but you can see them moving around, and you see them when they get attacked by it, they're able to dodge their laser attacks. Of of light was, you know, because of this time, they weren't faster than light, then them finding those laser attacks, they should not be able to dodge it at all, unless they did aim dodging. But they dodged it even after they fired it, showcasing that they do have light speed reflexes and uh, shown to have uh, faster than light uh, light speed reflex, like I said. Now, this does get, so that for me would 100% prove it, but this does get contradicted sometimes when we have like, you know, uh, I, I would say uh, Trunks when he basically was flying around the earth a couple of dozens of times and Piccolo couldn't catch up. like. People forget that he did take a nap. We don't know how long, but he did take a nap, so he could have done that for a bit, and he did go around dozens of times and stopped. Now, some people argue that this means that they just, at this point, got faster than speed light, and people that are on, you know, his level would be faster than speed light. And I get it, there's a lot of inconsistencies, and I will be talking about that, but it's like, those inconsistencies, when it comes to uh, light speed, it is there, like I said, but we have seen also prior to it uh, light speed feats, especially with the androids. I think uh, Android 19 and 20, they def definitely proved it because their energy, their attacks are purely energy, and the fact that Goku or the like the Z fires could react to it or you know deflect it or dodge it means that they will be moving at speeds of light. So you see there, there's also you know. When it comes to Kid Buu, Kid Buu was able to go from planet to planet, soul system to soul system, and he was specifically targeting ones on life. So that means he was moving great distance. He would be moving at millions to billions of times the speed of light, which would put him way past you know what a lot of people say. And the reason why I say this is because, um, first of all, the distance from planets is millions of miles away, and the distance from soul system to soul system is. 4.27 light years they say on average uh from different one it can be more or less but still they'll be light years away so for him to travel across that in a few years to multiple just wipe out hundreds of planets with life on it with life on it because that means that he would be specifically targeting planets that means that there'll be certain solar systems that only have a few planets they can wipe out and some solar systems with none hell even probably galaxies with uh, no life to wipe out so you know, Kid Buu is going from all these uh, planets to planets, solar system to solar system, probably galaxy to galaxy to wipe out these hundreds of planets in a few years, which would make him either millions to billions of times faster than the speed of light. So we've seen it quite con a couple of times and constantly, and there was some stuff there. And, you know, I want to talk more about the light speed stuff, but I think this video is getting a little too long. So instead of doing that, I'm going to just make a part two about their light speed uh, feats. And I might mention Dispo again a little bit because I do think a lot of people run with that argument too much to say, hey, these guys are not fast and light. Dispo was just stated to be fast and light, so that means that they're not faster. So I will make a part two about it. And also specifically more in that video, I'm going to talk about the inconsistencies when it comes to the speed. And then I'll also uh, make a video later on about travel speed versus combat speed, especially pertaining to Dragon Ball itself. Because the way, uh, the way speed works in different fictions is different than others to certain degrees, but travel speed and combat speed are two different things. They're, they should be talked about. Speed in general is very complex, far more complex than a lot of people think it is, especially when you get to more ridiculous levels of speed but also this topic just in general about the dragon ball character speed is far more bigger than me making one video so instead of making one long video i'm gonna make two videos so this is the first part of it and i'm gonna be making a part two of this and like i said i'm gonna talk a little bit about dispo in that one i'm just gonna talk about the inconsistencies of uh their light speed and more light speed feats so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i hope it was informative so have a good day